Dive into our newest narrative, War Shadows, crafted with care by StoryWave AI. Show your support by liking, sharing, and subscribing for a new story every day. Chapter 1, Silent Invasion. Elon Station X, a monolith of metal and ambition, floated in the silent vacuum, its presence a demonstration to humanity's reach among the stars. But this day, the silent halls of the station were disrupted by the hum of a returning transport ship, its cargo bay heavy with newly mined minerals from the asteroid belt. Evelyn Hawk, known among her crew as Hawk, moved with her usual precision through the corridors. Her cybernetic arm gleamed under the sterile lights, a constant reminder of the price paid for pushing the boundaries of space. Her green eyes scanned her environment, always alert, always ready. In the engineering bay, Marcus M.K. Kane wiped the sweat from his brow with a rugged arm, the phoenix tattoo on his back stretching with each move. The light brown hair that fell across his blue eyes did little to hide his concerned expression. Something's not right, he muttered, examining a panel. The station's crew welcomed the mineral transport's return with routine checks and unloading procedures. Yet, as the hours stretched into the first shift, a strange malaise began to sweep over them. Crew members complained of fatigue, headaches, and a haunting chill that seemed to seep into their bones. In the mess hall, Hawk sat opposite MK, her meal untouched. You noticed it too, huh? She asked, her voice firm and assertive. MK nodded, his voice calm yet tinged with an underlying urgency. It's like a shadow has passed over the crew. I've never seen anything like it. Hawk's focus sharpened, her instinct as security chief kicking in. We need to find out what's going on. This isn't natural. The two set out, their steps echoing through the now quiet station. They split up, each on a quest to uncover the source of the crew's affliction. Hawk made her way to the medical bay, where the station's doctor was already overwhelmed with the influx of pale, shivering figures. Have you identified the cause? Hawk asked, her voice cutting through the moans and shuffling feet of the ill. The doctor shook his head, his own face drawn with exhaustion. It's like nothing I've ever encountered. It's not viral, not bacterial. It's something else. Back in the bowels of the ship, MK's keen eyes caught a glimpse of something odd on the transport ship, a residue that wasn't there before, clinging to the mineral containers like an unwelcome parasite. He reached out, hesitating for a moment, before his fingers brushed against the substance. It was slick, unnatural, and as he pulled his hand away, he knew that this was no ordinary find. Meanwhile, Hawk's investigation led her to the comms room, where she found the operator slumped over the console, drool trickling down his chin. She recoiled, her mind racing with the implications of what this could mean. With each passing moment, the tension aboard Elon Station X escalated. The crew's condition worsened, and a sense of impending doom took hold. Hawk and MK, separated by their duties but united in their fear, knew they were running out of time. Convening in the command center, they shared their findings. It's something from the transport, MK said, his voice grave. We've brought something back with us. Hawk's scar seemed to burn on her cheek as she processed the information. We need to quarantine the ship. Lock it down before four, but her words were cut off by a scream from the corridor. The two raced toward the sound, only to find a crowd gathered around a crew member who convulsed on the floor, his eyes rolling back to reveal an eerie glowing red. The crew backed away in horror as the man's body contorted unnaturally, his groans turning into snarls. The transformation was swift, merciless. Within moments, the once human figure rose, its movements erratic, its demeanor mindless aggression. Evelyn and Marcus exchanged a glance, a silent vow passing between them. They would stand and fight this silent invasion, whatever the cost. Yet, as the reanimated figure lunged forward, a chilling thought took root. If they failed, Earth would be next. The station's corridors echoed with the sounds of chaos as Hawk and MK prepared to confront the nightmare that had befallen them. The first chapter of their struggle had begun, and it promised a tale of sacrifice, horror, and a battle for the very soul of humanity. Chapter 2, Virulent Secrets Amidst the sterile white of the medical bay, a sense of dread hung as heavy as the gravity that anchored Elon Station X to the cold void beyond its walls. The medics, garbed in biohazard suits that swished with every hurried step, 
were the last line of defense in a battle they were only beginning to understand. Evelyn paced outside the quarantine zone, her cybernetic arm flexing unconsciously as she watched through the transparent barrier. The crew members inside were pale, their bodies racked with the mysterious illness that had infiltrated their sanctuary in space. Any progress, she asked as Dr. Adler approached, his brow furrowed beneath the protective visor of his suit. We've isolated it, Dr. Adler began, his voice muffled but urgent. The bacteria, MA243, it's unlike anything we've seen. It's aggressive, adapts quickly. It doesn't just infect, it transforms its host. Evelyn's eyes narrowed, her mind racing. Transforms? Yes, Dr. Adler confirmed with a nod. The infected, they become something else entirely something not human. In the engineering sector, Marcus stood over a console, his hands moving deftly over the controls. His rugged features were set in concentration, the light from the screens reflecting in his blue eyes. He was searching for a way to reinforce the station's containment fields, but the systems were old and the MA-243 was spreading faster than they could react. We need to lock down the affected areas. Evelyn's voice crackled over the intercom, alerting him to the breach. Marcus hit a switch, and bulkheads began to seal with a resounding thud, but it was clear that their efforts were a step behind the rampant infection. I'm on it, but this thing's moving through the vents. It's like it's alive, thinking. Evelyn joined him, her presence a silent testament to her resolve. Then we outthink it. Seal off every section if we have to. As the two worked in tandem, the first outbreak began in earnest. A medic, desperately trying to save an infected crew member, was caught off guard as the patient's eyes snapped open, revealing a crimson glow. With a feral snarl, the newly turned creature lunged and chaos erupted within the quarantine zone. Alarms blared and red lights strobed in time with the rising panic. The medical team fought to subdue the infected, but it was too late. The MA-243 had claimed its first victim and the dominoes began to fall, one by one. We have a breach, a medic's voice shouted over the commotion, terror unmistakable, even through the distortion of the intercom. Evelyn and Marcus exchanged a look that needed no words. Their worst fears were unfolding. They moved quickly, issuing orders to the security teams, but each report that crackled through only confirmed the grim reality. The infection was spreading. In the heart of the chaos, Dr. Adler watched helplessly as his colleagues were overwhelmed. He backed away his breaths coming in short gasps as he realized the containment protocols had failed. The MA-243 wasn't just an infection, it was an invasion. Evelyn fought alongside her team, her training taking over as she faced the once human creatures. Her every move was precise, her every order calculated to stem the tide of the onslaught. We can't let it reach the civilians, she commanded, her eyes scanning for any sign of weakness in their defenses. Marcus, meanwhile, had rigged an improvised barrier using the station's energy grid. It was a temporary solution, a flickering shield against the darkness that threatened to engulf them all. The station's corridors echoed with the sounds of conflict, the scent of fear mixing with the sterile air. Evelyn and Marcus, despite their efforts, could feel the battle slipping from their grasp. The MA-243 was relentless, and for every fallen foe, it seemed two more took its place. As the chapter drew to a close, the once orderly Elon Station X had become a labyrinth of terror. The MA-243 had revealed its virulent secrets, and now it was a race against time to contain what had been unleashed. The tragedy was unfolding, and the shadow of war had never loomed so close. Chapter 3. Ripple of Fear The sterile walls of Elon Station X could not contain the wave of dread that swept through its metal veins. Whispers turned to shouts, and shouts turned to screams as the terrifying reality of the infection spread among the populace faster than the MA-243 itself. Evelyn strode through the chaos with purpose, her green eyes scanning the crowd for any sign of order. Her cybernetic arm seemed to pulse with the station's heartbeat, a balefire of strength amidst the turmoil. Everyone, please. Evelyn's voice boomed through the comm system, fighting to be heard over the clamor of fear. We're working to contain the threat. Stay calm and follow security protocols. In the residential sector, families huddled together, their homes transformed into sanctuaries against an unseen enemy. Children clung to their parents, their eyes wide with unspoken questions. 
The parents had no answers, only the instinct to protect their own at all costs. Marcus was in the thick of it, his engineer's mind searching for solutions amidst the panic. Evelyn, we've got people trying to force their way onto the escape shuttles, he reported, his calm demeanor a blatant contrast to the pandemonium around him. Lock down the shuttle bays. Nobody leaves until we know it's safe, Evelyn replied, her command cutting through the growing hysteria. The escape bays became battlegrounds, desperation clashing with duty. Security personnel were pushed to their limits as they tried to maintain order, their faces etched with the strain of their task. A mother clutched her daughter close, her voice breaking as she pleaded with the guards. Please, just let us go. We have to get away from here. I'm sorry, ma'am, but we can't do that, the guard responded, his stance unwavering despite the tears in the woman's eyes. Evelyn and Marcus met in the command center, the weight of their responsibility heavy on their shoulders. Screens flickered with images of the infected, their humanity slipping away with each grotesque transformation. We need to cut the power to non-essential areas, funnel everything we've got into the containment fields, Marcus suggested, his hands already moving across the control panel. Evelyn nodded, her scar a stark reminder of all they stood to lose. Do it, and get a message to Earth. They need to know what's happening. The lights dimmed in sections of the station as power was redirected, casting long shadows that seemed to echo the fear that gripped the hearts of the survivors. The darkness was a tangible reminder of the threat that lurked among them, invisible yet omnipresent. A father barricaded his family inside their quarters, furniture stacked against the door. We'll stay here until help comes, he assured his trembling wife, though doubt shadowed his words. The ripple of fear had become a tidal wave, and as the chapter drew to a close, the once orderly station was now a portrait of desperation. The MA-243 had not only infected the body, but it had also infected the mind, leaving a trail of chaos in its wake. And as the containment fields flickered with uncertainty, the station held its breath, waiting for the next wave to break. Chapter 4. The Undead Walk as the sun never rose in the vastness of space, neither did hope dawn on Elon Station X. The once bustling corridors now echoed with an ominous silence, broken only by the occasional shuffling of the undead. The living had become a minority, hidden behind reinforced doors and makeshift barricades, their hearts heavy with the burden of survival. Evelyn peered through the reinforced glass of the command center, her gaze falling upon the ghastly figures that wandered aimlessly outside. Each one had a story, a name she knew, a smile she remembered. But now, their faces were twisted, their humanity erased by the relentless MA-243. Marcus joined her, his eyes reflecting the turmoil that churned within. We can't hold back forever, Evelyn. Sooner or later, we have to make a move. I know, she replied, her voice a whisper lost in the vastness of the challenge ahead. We need a plan. In the makeshift sanctuary of the living quarters, a group of survivors gathered, their murmurs a blend of fear and strategy. Among them, a young mother clutched her daughter, whispering promises of safety she wasn't sure she could keep. We can't just sit here and wait for those things to get us, a tall mechanic asserted, his hands balled into fists at his side. Evelyn and Marcus entered, their arrival cutting through the tension. We're going to secure an escape route to the shuttle bay, Evelyn announced, her determination infectious. We'll need volunteers to help clear a path. A silence fell upon the group, each person wrestling with the choice before them. It was a mission that could mean life or death. And for some, the decision to fight was a farewell to the friends they once knew. I'll go, the mechanic said, stepping forward. Others followed, their nods a silent accord to the grim task ahead. The plan was set in motion, and the group moved with precision, each step a defiance against the creeping dread. They encountered the undead, their former crewmates, now obstacles to be overcome. Evelyn led the charge, her cybernetic arm a blur as she dispatched the reanimated with swift mercy. Marcus covered her flank, his engineer's ingenuity turned to the grim work of survival. This is wrong, Evelyn, Marcus said between breaths, his voice strained. They were our friends. We don't have a choice, she replied, her green eyes steely. It's them or us now. As they fought their way through the halls, the reality of their situation sank in. With each fallen undead, 
a piece of their past was lost, a memory turned to ash. The line between ally and enemy had blurred, and the cost of their survival was etched in sorrow. The shuttle bay loomed ahead, a pharos of escape, but as they neared, an explosion rocked the station. Flames burst from the bay's entrance, and the way forward was engulfed in fire. No, Evelyn cried out, the heat of the blaze reflecting the fury in her eyes. Who would do this? Panic seized the survivors, their escape route cut off, their hopes turned to smoke. They were trapped, the undead closing in, and the fire barring the only way out. Marcus looked to Evelyn, his blue eyes searching for an answer they both knew didn't exist. What now, Evelyn? What now? The chapter closed with the survivors huddled together, the flickering flames casting their shadows against the walls. The undead walked, and the living stood on the precipice of despair. The station, once a monument to human achievement, had become a tomb, and the ripple of fear had become a wave that threatened to wash them all away. Chapter 5. Divide to Conquer In the dimly lit command center of Elon Station X, the air was thick with tension. The leaders of the remaining crew members stood in a circle, their faces illuminated by the glow of emergency lights. The threat outside their doors was no longer just the undead. It was the impending collapse of unity within their ranks. Evelyn leaned against the console, her cybernetic arm reflecting the faint light, a symbol of her strength and resilience. We need to work together, she asserted, her green eyes scanning the faces of her crew. Our survival depends on it. Marcus stood beside her, his posture betraying his fatigue. His blue eyes, once a well of calm, now flickered with the strain of the situation. Evelyn's right, we can't let fear tear us apart. A murmur of agreement passed among some, but not all were convinced. A voice rose from the back, sharp and filled with frustration. And what if your plans fail? Hmm? We can't put all our hopes on one strategy. The speaker was Dr. Adler, his face haggard from hours of trying to understand the MA-243. Some of us think it's better to split up, increase our chances of finding a way out, or a cure. Evelyn straightened, her presence commanding the room. Splitting up will only make us more vulnerable. The undead, they were our friends, our family, another crew member interjected, his voice breaking with emotion. We can't just forget that. Maybe there's another way, a way to save them. The room erupted into heated conversation, each person's words overlaying another's, building into a raucousness of fear, hope, and desperation. Marcus raised his hands, pleading for silence. Listen to yourselves. This is exactly what the MA-243 wants, to divide us, to weaken us. His plea fell on deaf ears as the crew split into factions, each arguing for their own survival plan. Evelyn watched, her heart sinking as the fabric of their unity unraveled before her eyes. Enough. Evelyn's shout cut through the noise. We're not enemies. The real enemy is out there, turning us into monsters. We need a united front, or we're all as good as dead. Her words hung in the air, heavy with truth. Some nodded, their will renewed, while others turned away, their minds made up to forge their own path. The command center doors slid open, and a group of dissenters filed out, determined to enact their own escape plans. Evelyn and Marcus exchanged a look of deep concern, knowing the station's defenses were now compromised. As the chapter drew to a close, the divide among the crew had become a chasm. The station, once a hive of cooperation and scientific marvel, was now a battleground of conflicting wills. The undead continued their relentless march, and with the crew's unity fractured, the shadows of war grew ever darker, threatening to engulf what little hope remained. Chapter 6, Mistrust Shadow The once unshakable solidarity of Elon Station X's survivors was now as brittle as the cracking ice on a frozen lake. The corridors, once pathways to progress and cooperation, became a maze where suspicion lurked around every corner. Evelyn watched with furrowed brow as her crew eyed each other with a wariness that was as infectious as the MA-243 itself. She stood in the common area, a space meant for camaraderie, now repurposed into a makeshift forum for the paranoid. I saw Jensen sneezing earlier. That's how it starts, isn't it? One survivor whispered to another, casting a sharp glance at a man slumped in the corner, his eyes red with fatigue. Jensen, hearing his name, lifted his head. It's just a cold, I swear, he pleaded, but his words were met with a glare that suggested his innocence was already in question. Marcus, Leaning against a bulkhead with arms crossed, observed the scene unfold. 
His voice, when he spoke, cut through the mounting tension. We can't turn on each other like this. It's exactly what will destroy us. A woman, her hands knotted in her lap, spoke up, her voice quavering. But how can we know? How can we be sure who's infected and who's not? You can't. That's the whole point, another crew member shouted, standing up so quickly his chair clattered to the floor. Anyone could be carrying the bacteria, waiting to turn on us. Evelyn stepped forward, her green eyes locking onto those of the fearful crew. We have checks in place. Dr. Adler has protocols. Protocols? We've seen how well those worked, a voice interrupted from the back, dripping with scorn. The room erupted into an uproar of accusations, each survivor's fear manifesting as anger and distrust. Evelyn and Marcus exchanged a glance, understanding that this breakdown could spell the end of all their chances for survival. I can run tests, Dr. Adler offered, stepping into the center of the turmoil with a handheld scanner. We can clear each person one by one. You expect us to line up like sheep? To trust that thing to save us? The scornful voice challenged again, its owner hidden among the crowd. Evelyn raised her voice, a ferris of authority amidst the storm. What other choice do we have? To turn on each other based on suspicion alone? The argument raged on, voices overlapping, until a sudden scream pierced the air. The group fell silent, turning as one toward the source. In the doorway stood a figure, half in shadow, clutching at their arm, a dark stain spreading across the fabric of their sleeve. It bit me. One of those things bit me. The figure cried, their voice strangled by terror. Panic took hold, and within moments the crowd surged forward. Accusations became actions, and before Evelyn or Marcus could intervene, the room descended into chaos. The bitten crew member was swallowed by the fray, their cries lost amidst the sounds of a struggle. When the crowd finally parted, the figure lay still, the shadow of mistrust having claimed another victim. The chapter closed with the survivors staring at one another, the realization of what they had become written on their faces. The fabric of trust had torn completely, leaving them exposed to the shadows that crept ever closer, ready to engulf them all in tragedy. Chapter 7, Last Stand Fails. The command center, once the nerve center of Elon Station X, stood as the last bastion against the relentless tide of the infected. Its reinforced doors and walls had been a symbol of safety, a place where strategy and hope still lived. Evelyn, with her characteristic black hair pulled back and green eyes ever vigilant, stood before the holographic map, her cybernetic arm moving pieces that represented their dwindling defenses. Marcus, his light brown hair now streaked with grease, and his blue eyes weary, slumped against a console, the weight of the situation pressing down upon him. We can't keep this up much longer, Marcus said, his voice echoing in the tense atmosphere of the room. Supplies are running low, and the infected, there's just too many of them. We've got to, Evelyn replied, her tone firm. If this stronghold falls, there's nothing left to stop them from overrunning the entire station. A sudden crash resonated through the command center, followed by the unmistakable sound of the undead's hungry moans. The security feed flickered, showing a horde of the infected slamming against the outer barrier. Look lively, folks. We've got a breach, shouted Sergeant Diaz, a burly figure with a voice that could cut through steel. The soldiers, each bearing the scars of battle, both physical and emotional, scrambled to their positions. Evelyn and Marcus exchanged a glance, understanding the gravity of the moment. As the infected burst through the final barriers, a desperate battle ensued. Fall back, fall back to secondary positions. Evelyn commanded, her voice resolute amidst the chaos. The stronghold's defenders fought with all the ferocity born of desperation, but the infected were relentless. One by one, station personnel fell, their cries a grim chorus to the battle's savage symphony. We need to seal the armory, Marcus shouted over the din, or we risk losing all our weapons. Evelyn nodded, her movements instinctive as she and Marcus charged toward the armory, a pivotal room housing the station's remaining arsenal. They arrived just in time to see the door buckling under the onslaught of the infected. The two worked in tandem, Marcus manipulating the control panels while Evelyn provided cover. Got it, Marcus exclaimed as the heavy door slid shut, but their relief was short-lived. A sudden explosion rocked the command center, the force of the blast knocking them off their feet. The armory door, once sealed, was now a twisted wreck, 
and through the smoke and flames, the infected poured in. Retreat! Evelyn's call was a rallying cry as she helped Marcus to his feet. We need to get to the escape pods. The survivors, a ragged group of soldiers and civilians alike, fled through the burning corridors, leaving behind the command center and any semblance of order it once held. As they ran, the sounds of the station's downfall filled their ears. The command structure had crumbled, and with it, the last hope of regaining control. Essential supplies and weapons were now in the clutches of the MA-243's monstrous hosts. The chapter closed with the survivors reaching the escape pods, their faces hollow with the realization of their defeat. The stronghold had fallen, and with it, the last stand against the darkness had failed. The shadows of war loomed larger than ever, and the fight for survival had become a flight from certain doom. Chapter 8. Abyss Stares Back Elon Station X, once a flare of human ingenuity, now resembled a wounded beast. Sections of its once pristine exterior marred by the scars of battle and the insidious spread of MA-243. Within its damaged walls, the survivors faced a grim decision that would determine the fate of all aboard. Evelyn stood in the makeshift meeting room, her athletic frame poised before a hastily assembled council of remaining crew members. The air was thick with unspoken dread, each person's gaze heavy with the weight of impending doom. We're out of options, Evelyn stated, her voice steady despite the turmoil that churned around them. The infection has spread too far, too fast. We have to consider jettisoning the affected sections. A collective gasp rippled through the room, the suggestion hung like a specter over those gathered, its implications as chilling as the void that embraced the station. Marcus, his rugged features set in a frown, leaned against a support beam. You're talking about cutting people loose, Evelyn. People who might still be alive. Evelyn met his gaze, her own eyes a mirror of the conflict that raged within. I know, but if we don't, the entire station is at risk. It's a choice between a few lives now or everyone's later. The room erupted into fervent debate. Voices clashed, each argument a desperate plea for a solution that didn't require such a sacrifice. Is this who we are now? A young engineer named Sophia challenged, her blue eyes blazing with conviction. We're supposed to be better than this, to find another way. Evelyn turned to Sophia, acknowledging her passion. Believe me, if there were any other way, I'd take it. But the station is dying, and if we don't act, we'll die with it. A weary scientist, Dr. Niles, pushed his glasses up the bridge of his nose. We've been trying to find a cure, but the truth is, we're running out of time. Evelyn's plan might be our only chance. The dialogue continued, lengthy and fraught with emotion. The crew shared their thoughts, their fears, and their hopes, but the stark reality of their situation was inescapable. The MA-243 showed no signs of slowing, and the station's integrity was compromised. The debate raged on until the early hours, when finally, a somber consensus was reached. With heavy hearts, they agreed to Evelyn's plan. The time had come to sever the limbs to save the body. As the preparations began, the gravity of their decisions settled upon the crew like a shroud. Some volunteered to help, while others retreated into the shadows, unable to bear witness to the act. Evelyn and Marcus stood at the control panel, their fingers hovering over the buttons that would send their comrades into the abyss. The silence between them was a gulf, filled with the unsaid words of a thousand regrets. Are we ready? Evelyn asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Marcus nodded, his face a stoic mask. Do it. With a heavy heart, Evelyn pressed the button. The station shuddered as the infected sections detached, the sound of shearing metal a final haunting farewell. As the sections drifted away, the survivors watched through the portholes, their reflections ghostly in the glass. The abyss stared back at them, a silent judge to their choice. The chapter ended with the station quieter now, the threat momentarily abated, but the cost etched into the very soul of those who remained. The tragic descent into darkness had claimed not just lives, but a part of their humanity, leaving a shadow that would forever linger in the war-torn corridors of Elon Station X. Chapter 9. The Cost of Salvation The laboratory on Elon Station X was a sanctuary of last hopes, where the hum of machinery and the sterile scent of antiseptics filled the air. Dr. Niles, his glasses perpetually slipping down his nose, peered through the microscope at the MA243 bacteria, his hands steady despite the havoc that reigned outside. 
Evelyn stood by the door, her black hair tied back, revealing the determined set of her jaw. Any progress, doctor? Time isn't a luxury we have. Dr. Niles straightened up, rubbing his tired eyes. I might be onto something, but it's not without risks. I've been trying to tweak the bacteria's genetic structure to create an antidote. Marcus, who had been tinkering with a piece of equipment on the other side of the lab, looked up. Risks? What kind of risks? Well, Dr. Niles hesitated, pushing his glasses up. If I miscalculate, the mutation could become even more virulent. Evelyn crossed the room, her green eyes locking onto the petri dishes housing the deadly bacteria. We're living on borrowed time. If you think there's a chance, doctor, you have to take it. Sophia, the young engineer, joined the group, her blue eyes wide with concern. But what if it goes wrong? We could make things worse. Dr. Niles nodded gravely. Yes, but if I succeed, we could save everyone on this station and possibly Earth. It's a gamble, but one we must consider. The debate that followed was lengthy, the conversation weaving through the ethics and necessity of their actions. Each person's input painted a picture of their personality, their history, and the desperation of their situation. Finally, with the reluctant consensus of the team, Dr. Niles proceeded with the experiment. The lab was silent, save for the beeping of machines, as they all watched the bacteria under the microscope begin to shift and change. Something's happening, Dr. Niles murmured, adjusting the focus. The bacteria are, no, no, this isn't right. Alarm bells rang out, not from the station's warning system, but from the reactions on the faces of those present. The bacteria had indeed mutated, but instead of a cure, they had created a more formidable monster. The first sign of trouble came swiftly. Reports flooded in from the survivors' barricades. The undead, previously sluggish and mindless, were now exhibiting terrifying speed and cunning. Their breaking through came a frantic voice over the comm system. They're stronger than before. Evelyn clenched her fists, the scar on her cheek standing out starkly against her pale skin. Doctor, whatever you did, reverse it now. Dr. Niles scrambled to undo his work, his fingers flying over the lab equipment, but the mutation was beyond his control, a Pandora's box that couldn't be closed. Marcus grabbed a weapon, his demeanor shifting to one of grim determination. We need to help the others. Defend the barricades. As they rushed to assist their fellow survivors, the chapter's tension crescendoed into a palpable sense of dread. The mutation had indeed made the undenw aggressive, their attacks more ferocious, and the cost of Dr. Niles' salvation attempt was written in the blood of those who fell to the creature's newfound ferocity. The chapter closed on a haunting note, with the survivors backed into a corner, their numbers dwindling. The once hopeful attempt at a cure had turned into a dire enhancement of the threat, and the shadows of war had never felt so suffocating. Chapter 10, Whispers of Treason. In the cold, unforgiving expanse of space, Elon Station X stood isolated, a fortress of despair clinging to the edge of survival. Inside, the survivors huddled together, unaware that the very earth they longed to return to had cast them adrift. Evelyn's boots echoed in the corridor as she approached the communications room, where Marcus had been attempting to make contact with Earth Command. The green of her eyes was dulled by fatigue, yet her stride never wavered. Marcus, any word from Command? Evelyn inquired, her voice echoing off the metal walls. Marcus looked up from the console, his face etched with lines of worry. Yeah, I got through, but you're not going to like it, he replied, his voice tinged with a bitterness that didn't suit him. Evelyn braced herself against the console, her fingers gripping the edge. Tell me, they're cutting us loose, Evelyn. There's talk of blowing the station to bits to keep the infection from spreading to Earth, Marcus revealed, his blue eyes meeting hers with a grim resolve. The room filled with a stunned silence, the betrayal hanging in the air like a toxic gas. Sophia, who had been repairing a power conduit nearby, dropped her tools with a clatter. They can't do that, can they? Just decide we're not worth saving? Sophia's voice was a mix of anger and disbelief. Evelyn straightened, her mind racing. We have to find another way off this station. There's got to be a ship, a shuttle, anything. Dr. Niles entered, his white lab coat smeared with grease and his glasses askew. I overheard, is it true about Earth Command? Evelyn nodded, her jaw set. We're on our own now. We need to act fast. The survivors gathered, their faces reflecting the gravity of their plight. 
the communications room became a hub of frantic activity as plans were formed and roles assigned. We'll need to check every docking bay, every hangar, Marcus instructed, his voice steady despite the chaos that threatened to engulf them. Evelyn turned to the group, her presence commanding attention. Some of you will need to create a diversion. Keep those things away from us while we search. The group murmured their agreement, their unity forged anew in the face of abandonment. As the chapter neared its end, the sounds of hurried preparations filled the station. The whispers of treason from Earth had ignited a fire within the crew, a determination to defy the fate that had been chosen for them. With the station's artificial day giving way to the simulated night, the survivors worked under the harsh glow of emergency lighting. The shadows cast by their figures danced ominously on the walls, a grim reminder of the tragic cliffhanger that loomed over their heads. As Evelyn, Marcus, and Sophia led a team toward the docking bays, the station trembled with the first signs of Earth Command's grim resolve. Time was slipping away, and with it, the chance for salvation. The chapter closed, with the survivors racing against the clock, the specter of annihilation chasing them down the metal corridors of their once proud haven in the stars. Chapter 11, Eulogy for the Fallen. The silence aboard Elon Station X was a shroud, draping over the survivors like a heavy fog. The medical bay, once a torch of healing and hope, now served as a somber gathering place where the crew stood to honor those they had lost. Evelyn, her black hair tied back from her determined face, stood at the forefront of the gathered, her green eyes reflecting the dim light. Beside her, Marcus, the wear of the station's plight visible in the lines of his rugged face, shared a solemn glance with her. It wasn't supposed to be like this, Sophia's voice broke through the quiet, her blue eyes glassy with unshed tears as she clutched a wrench, her engineer's hands now idle. No, it wasn't, Evelyn agreed, her voice low and steady. They were brave, every single one of them. They knew the risks, and still they went out there, for all of us. Marcus nodded, his throat tight as he looked over the faces of the crew. We found the antivirals because of them. Their sacrifice won't be in vain. The room filled with the sound of murmured assents, the survivors acknowledging the bitter truth of Marcus's words. The mission had been a desperate gamble, a dive into the darkest corners of the station for a glimmer of hope. They were more than just crewmates, Dr. Niles chimed in, pushing his glasses up his nose. They were friends, family. We can't forget that. We can't let it just be about survival. Evelyn stepped forward, her cybernetic arm catching the light as she addressed the room. We have to keep fighting, for them, for ourselves. We can't let fear or grief stop us from doing what needs to be done. Sophia wiped at her eyes, steeling herself against the sorrow that threatened to overwhelm her. They would want us to keep going, to use the antivirals and find a way to beat this thing. The group's determination hardened, their shared loss a grim but unifying force. They understood the stakes, the price of their continued existence aboard the Forsaken Station. We'll start testing the antivirals immediately, Dr. Niles said, a flicker of determination crossing his features. We owe it to them to try everything. As the chapter drew to a close, the survivors dispersed, each carrying the weight of the eulogy in their hearts. The loss of their comrades was a fresh wound, a reminder of the fragility of life amidst the chaos. The war shadows stretched long and dark across the station, the tragic cliffhanger of their fate hanging over them like a specter as they prepared for what could be their final stand. Chapter 12, Echoes in the Dark. The silence that had descended upon Elon Station X was a living entity, a suffocating blanket that smothered the remnants of hope among the crew. The communications array, once alive with the chatter of Earth's directives, now stood as a mute testament to their isolation. Evelyn paced the length of the command center, her footsteps a soft drumbeat in the suffocating quiet. She eyed the screens, willing a message to appear, but the void beyond remained indifferent to their plight. Marcus hunched over a ration pack, the contents sparse and uninviting. We're down to the last of the supplies, he announced, his voice echoing hollowly against the metal walls. Sophia leaned against the bulkhead, her gaze fixed on the dwindling pile of provisions. How long before we're completely out? Evelyn stopped pacing, turning to face her crew. A week, maybe less. 
We need to ration what's left and find an alternative, fast. The crew's assembly was a tableau of strained faces, each one etched with the signs of their ordeal. The shared understanding of their circumstance hung heavily in the room. A mechanic named Jackson broke the silence, his voice gravely with disuse. There's talk of growing food hydroponically, but we'd need time we don't have, and water more than what's left in the tanks. Evelyn nodded, her green eyes meeting his. Then we'll need to prioritize. Water reclamation systems can be modified to increase efficiency. A murmur of agreement rippled through the group. The conversation turned to action as they discussed the technicalities of survival in an environment that offered no quarter. Dr. Niles, his once pristine lab coat now dulled with the patina of hard work, chimed in. We've been recycling air and water since day one, but the systems are taxed. We'll need to oversee them personally to prevent failure. Marcus rubbed his stubbled jaw, the gears of his mind working tirelessly. I'll take the first shift. We can't afford any slip-ups. The crew dispersed, each to their assigned tasks, the echoes of their footsteps a haunting reminder of those who walked the corridors no more. As the chapter drew to its close, the crew's conviction was indeed tested by the twin specters of starvation and solitude. The shadows grew longer, the whispers in the dark louder, and the tragic cliffhanger of their survival hung precariously in the balance, a story still unfolding in the inky blackness of space. Chapter 13 infection within. The air inside Elon Station X was stale, the recycled oxygen carrying a tang of metal and fear. The command center, once a hub of leadership and decision-making, had become a chamber of shadows and uncertainty. At the center stood Evelyn, her athletic figure rigid with tension as she faced the crew. Where's Commander Sterling? Jackson's voice cut through the murmur, his eyes scanning the room for the familiar figure of their leader. Evelyn's gaze lingered on the empty chair where Commander Sterling usually sat. He's not coming, she said, her voice carrying a weight that seemed to press on the walls of the room. The crew exchanged uneasy looks, their faces reflecting the flickering lights above. What do you mean, he's not coming? Where is he? Sophia asked, her hands gripping the back of a chair for support. He's, he was infected. We found him in his quarters, changed. Evelyn's announcement fell like a hammer bar, the implications clear to all present. A collective gasp swept through the group. The commander had been more than a leader. He had been a symbol of stability. His loss was a blow that shook the very foundation of their fragile society. Marcus stepped up beside Evelyn, his blue eyes scanning the room. We need to keep it together. Commander Sterling wouldn't want us to fall apart now. But who's in charge? Someone called out from the back, the question hanging in the air like a specter. We all are, Evelyn replied firmly. We're a team, and we'll make decisions together. The conversations that ensued were lengthy and charged with emotion. The crew debated, strategized, and consoled one another, their voices a tapestry of accents and dialects born from different corners of Earth and space. We've got to secure the command center, make sure it's locked tight from those things, Jackson stated, his voice rough like gravel. And the food situation? Sophia interjected, her blue eyes serious. We can't ignore that we're running low. Evelyn listened, her mind working overtime. We'll continue with the rationing plan, and we'll start hydroponic trials for food. We've got the tech. We need to use it. As the chapter unfolded, the survivors rallied, their perseverance hardening in the face of despair. They organized watches, doubled security measures, and inventoried every scrap of food and resource. The station's halls, once teeming with life, now echoed with the quiet determination of those left. The shadows seemed to grow longer, the darkness more oppressive, as the survivors worked to fill the void left by their fallen leader. The chapter ended with the silence of the command center, broken only by the soft tapping of fingers on the console, the screens glowing with data, and the faint hope of salvation. The tragic cliffhanger hung over them, the knowledge that the infection had found its way within their ranks, a reminder that the war shadows were never far away. Chapter 14, Breach of Dawn. Elon Station X, a labyrinth of steel and sorrow, floated in the void, its interiors echoing with the remnants of the life it once held. The survivors, a band of weary souls, gathered in the dim light of the makeshift command center, their faces etched with resolve. 
Evelyn leaned over the console, her black hair casting a shadow across the screens. We've got one chance at this, she began, her voice cutting through the heavy air. The lunar colonies are sending a rescue mission, but we have to signal them. The comm array in the central hub is our only shot. Marcus rubbed his hands together, the calluses on his fingers a testimony to the hard work they had endured. Central hubs swarming with those things, he pointed out, his accent thick with concern. Sophia, her blue eyes reflecting the flickering lights, stepped closer. We can't just sit here. I say we go for it. We've made it through worse. Evelyn nodded, her green eyes scanning the faces around her. We'll need to be quick and quiet. If we can slip past the infected, we can send the signal and get off this cursed station. Jackson, the mechanic, clutched his wrench like a talisman. Quiet's my middle name. Let's gear up and move out. The survivors' conversation grew in intensity as they planned their perilous journey. They mapped out routes, distributed weapons, and shared terse words of encouragement. As they ventured into the corridors, the station seemed to groan under the weight of their task. The darkness was a tangible presence, pressing in on them from all sides. The central hub loomed before them, a gaping maw of darkness. The infected, their eyes glowing with a haunting red, shuffled aimlessly, unaware of the living that moved among them. Evelyn signaled to the group, her hand movements sharp and precise. There, the comma ray, she whispered, pointing to the towering structure in the center of the room. Marcus nodded, his eyes locked on the path ahead. On my count, we move. One, two, three. They darted forward, their footsteps a hushed rush against the cold metal floor. The infected turned, sensing the disturbance, their groans a chorus of the damned. Sophia reached the console first, her fingers flying over the keys. Almost there. Just a few more seconds. Evelyn stood guard, her weapon at the ready, as the others took defensive positions. The infected drew closer, their movements becoming more deliberate, more threatening. With a triumphant beep, the signal shot out into space, a beacon of hope amidst the desolation. It's done, Sophia exclaimed, her voice a mix of relief and triumph. The survivors retreated, the infected snapping at their heels. The station, once a symbol of humanity's reach into the cosmos, was now a prison they were desperate to escape. As they made their way back, the chapter reached its peak. The signal for rescue had been sent, but at a grave cost. The infected were closing in, and the survivors' escape was far from certain. The tragic cliffhanger hung over them like a guillotine, its blade poised to fall at the slightest misstep. The breach of dawn was upon them, but whether it heralded salvation or doom remained to be seen. Chapter 15, Desperate Message. The sterile chill of Elon Station X's communications room was a sharp contrast to the fevered pitch of activity within. Evelyn stood at the central console, her fingers dancing across the keys with a fervor born out of desperation. The green light of the monitors cast an unearthly glow on her face, a stark reminder of the dire situation at hand. Marcus, his rugged face set in grim determination, hovered over a secondary console, his fingers equally busy. We've got to make this count, he muttered, the low timber of his voice barely audible above the hum of the equipment. Sophia, her blue eyes wide with the strain of the moment, clutched a transceiver tightly. Do you think they'll hear us? The lunar colonies, I mean. Evelyn paused, considering her words carefully. They have to. It's our only shot. The room fell into a tense silence as the message was prepared. A heart-wrenching plea for aid, a cry into the abyss. Jackson and Dr. Niles stood by, their faces reflecting the mix of hope and fear that gripped them all. Evelyn's voice broke the silence, strong and clear as she began to record the message. This is Security Chief Evelyn Hawk of Elon Station X, broadcasting on all emergency channels. We are under assault by an unknown infection that turns the afflicted into violent, undead creatures. We have sustained heavy casualties and are in dire need of immediate assistance. Our defenses won't hold much longer. Marcus interjected, his voice steady despite the situation. We've managed to send a signal to the lunar colonies. We're waiting on you, friends. Time isn't on our side. The communications array hummed, the message now hurtling through the void toward the lunar outposts. The survivors could only hope their plea would pierce the silence that had enveloped them since Earth Command's chilling abandonment. As they waited, the undead pressed against the last barriers of the survivors' defenses. 
The sound of their relentless assault was a macabre symphony, the rhythm of their beating fists and gnashing teeth a constant reminder of the peril just beyond the walls. Sophia glanced at the barricaded door, her voice a whisper. How long do you think we have? Jackson, gripping his wrench like a lifeline, shook his head. Not long. Those barricades weren't meant to hold back this kind of force. Evelyn turned from the console, her eyes meeting each of her companions in turn. We stand our ground until help arrives. We've come too far to give up now. The group nodded, a silent pact made in the face of overwhelming odds. They took up positions, each ready to defend the makeshift stronghold they had created. As the chapter drew to a close, the waiting game began. Each tick of the clock was a thunderous beat in the hearts of the survivors. The undead horde descended upon them with relentless fury, and the final turn of their tragic story seemed inevitable. With the message sent, the survivors of Elon Station X braced for the onslaught, their lives hanging in the balance as they clung to the hope that rescue would come before the breach. The shadows of war had never been darker, and as the chapter ended, the echoes of their defiance rang out, a desperate cry in the enveloping darkness. Chapter 16, Sacrifices Echo. The cold metal walls of Elon Station X's escape pod bay reverberated with the sounds of hurried preparation and heavy hearts. Evelyn stood tall, her shadow stretching across the bay as she surveyed the group of survivors. Marcus, his face a mask of resolve, checked the supplies in each pod with meticulous care. We can't all leave, Evelyn stated, her voice echoing off the walls. The pods won't carry us all, and someone needs to stay behind to manually override the launch. Sophia, her hands stained with grease, looked up from the console. Then I'll stay. I know the systems better than anyone. No. It was Marcus who spoke up, his voice firm. You've got the skills to keep the pods running if something goes wrong mid-flight. It should be me. The survivors, gathered in the bay, fell silent. The gravity of the situation settled upon them like a shroud. They knew not everyone would make it out, but the reality of deciding who would stay clawed at them. Jackson, his wrench hanging by his side, stepped forward. We draw straws. It's the only fair way. Evelyn considered the proposal, her eyes scanning the faces before her. Fair doesn't keep you alive, she countered. We need to think strategically. They moved to the center of the bay, the group forming a tight circle. The conversation that followed was lengthy and charged with emotion. Arguments rose and fell as they grappled with the decision, the air heavy with the scent of oil and fear. I've lived a good life, Dr. Niles finally said, his voice steady despite the flicker of fear in his eyes. I'll stay. You need young people to carry on. No, you can't. Sophia protested, her voice cracking. We need your knowledge, your experience. Evelyn raised her hand for silence. This isn't about age or experience. It's about who can make the difference out there, she said, gesturing to the space beyond the station. The debate raged on each member of the crew voicing their thoughts, their reasoning, their willingness to be the one who stayed behind. It was a confirmation to their character, the bonds they had formed in the face of relentless darkness. As the final decision loomed, Marcus stepped back into the center. I'll do it. I've made up my mind. Evelyn locked eyes with him, a silent conversation passing between them. Then it settled, she conceded, the echo of sacrifice ringing in her words. The survivors embraced, their goodbyes a mixture of gratitude and remorse. They loaded into the pods, each carrying the hope and legacy of those who would remain. As the pods sealed shut, Marcus turned to the control panel, his fingers hovering over the launch sequence. Evelyn stood beside him, her decision made in the quiet space between heartbeats. You should be on a pod, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. She shook her head, her gaze unwavering. We finish this together. The chapter ended with the sound of escape pods ejecting into the void, the station growing quieter with each departure. Evelyn and Marcus watched the monitors, the blips representing their friends growing distant. They turned to face the encroaching horde, their bravery a signal in the consuming dark. The final turn of their story was upon them, the tragic cliffhanger, a deafening silence in the void of space. As the escape pods carried the hope of the future, the echoes of sacrifice would forever resonate in the hearts of those who had been saved. Chapter 17, Abandon All Hope. 
the narrow corridors of Elon Station X, once a symbol of humanity's reach into the cosmos, now felt like the constricting coils of a serpent. Red emergency lights pulsed like the station's dying heartbeat, casting the survivors in a grim hue as they prepared for the arrival of the rescue party. Evelyn, her silhouette outlined by the flickering lights, checked her weapon with practiced hands. Beside her, Marcus loaded supplies into a cart, his movements sharp and efficient. The survivors were a tapestry of determination, each one clad in the remnants of uniforms and makeshift armor. Sophia, her face smeared with soot, approached Evelyn. How long till they get here? Her voice was steady, but the strain of their ordeal was etched in the lines of her face. Less than an hour, if all goes according to plan, Evelyn replied, not meeting Sophia's gaze as she continued her equipment check. A sudden clatter echoed down the hall, drawing their attention. Jackson appeared, breathless, his usual calm demeanor replaced by wide-eyed urgency. The shuttle bay doors are jammed. Someone sabotaged the controls. The news hit them like a physical blow, the implications clear and immediate. Sabotaged? But who? Marcus began, but the answer was already dawning on them. Dr. Niles stepped forward, his usual stoic composure fractured by disbelief. I saw Renner near the controls earlier. He said he was checking the systems. Evelyn's eyes narrowed. Renner? He's been with us since the beginning. The survivors gathered, their voices a chorus of confusion and betrayal. Why would he do this? Sophia asked, the question hanging heavy in the air. He must have cracked under the pressure, Jackson suggested, his hand tightening around his wrench. We don't have time for this, Evelyn cut through the speculation. We need to get those doors open, with or without Renner's help. The group mobilized, their previous unity now laced with suspicion as they made their way to the shuttle bay. The station groaned around them, the sound of the undead never far behind. They arrived at the bay to find Renner, his back to them, hunched over the control panel. Renner, Marcus bellowed. Step away from there. Renner turned slowly, his expression one of resignation. I can't let you leave, he said, his voice hollow. They promised me a cure, a way off the station if I stopped you. The betrayal stung more than the cold air that hissed through the cracks in the station's armor. There is no cure, Renner. You know that, Sophia exclaimed, her hands balled into fists at her sides. Evelyn stepped forward, her gaze locked on Renner. We can still fix this. Help us open the doors. Renner's eyes flicked to the panel, then back to the survivors. It's too late, he whispered, just as the sound of the undead grew louder, their presence now undeniable. The survivors sprang into action, their fight for survival reignited by the threat of the encroaching horde. Sophia and Dr. Niles worked frantically at the controls, attempting to override the sabotage. Evelyn and Marcus stood back to back, their weapons a final line of defense as the undead spilled into the bay, their snarls a grotesque symphony. As the chapter hurtled toward its conclusion, the tension reached a fever pitch. The survivors battled the horde, their every move a dance with death as they fought their way to the rescue shuttle. The chapter closed with the survivors cornered, the shuttle within reach, but the bay doors still sealed shut. The final turn of their tragic story hung in the balance, a razor's edge between salvation and doom. Chapter 18, Shadows on the Horizon. The shuttle hurtled through the vacuum of space, its hull scarred from its hasty departure from Elon Station X. Inside, the survivors sat strapped in their seats, the hum of the engines a constant companion to their uneasy thoughts. Earth loomed before them, a blue marble swathed in clouds, growing larger and more daunting by the minute. Evelyn glanced at the crew, her eyes lingering on each face. Marcus sat across from her, his gaze fixed on the window where the curve of earth began to take shape. Sophia, her fingers tapping a nervous rhythm on the armrest, tried to catch a glimpse of their destination through the small porthole. We're almost home. Marcus finally broke the silence, his words an attempt to pierce the veil of tension. Yeah, home, Sophia echoed, her tone lacking the enthusiasm one might expect. Do you think they'll quarantine us as soon as we land? It's protocol. After what we've been through, they'd be fools not to, Evelyn replied, her voice steady. The conversation was interrupted by a cough from one of the back seats. Dr. Niles, who had been remarkably quiet during the descent, doubled over, a handkerchief pressed to his mouth. You okay, Doc? Jackson called out from a few seats away, his concern evident even from a distance. 
Dr. Niles straightened up, nodding weakly. Just a tickle in my throat, he assured them, but the unease in his eyes betrayed his words. Evelyn unbuckled her harness and moved to Dr. Niles' side. Let me see, she insisted, her training as security chief kicking in despite her exhaustion. Dr. Niles hesitated before lowering the handkerchief. A drop of blood stained the white fabric, a stark difference that sent a chill through the cabin. Sophia's eyes widened, her worst fears confirmed. That's how it starts, isn't it? The infection? No, it can't be. Panic surged like a wave through the shuttle. The survivors began to murmur among themselves, the fear of the unknown enemy within now as palpable as the enemy they had left behind. We don't know that he's infected. Marcus tried to quell the rising alarm. It could be anything, a reaction to the stress, to the atmosphere change. Evelyn met Marcus's gaze, a silent conversation passing between them. We need to stay calm. Until we know more, we can't jump to conclusions. Doctor, Niles looked up at the crew, his expression sorrowful. I'm sorry. I thought it was nothing, just a small cough. Evelyn turned to the shuttle's communication system, her voice clear and authoritative as she began to speak. This is Shuttle 718 requesting immediate medical assistance upon landing. We may have a potential infection on board. The shuttle descended into Earth's atmosphere, the blue sky outside the windows belying the storm of fear and suspicion brewing within. The chapter closed with the shuttle's shadow stretching across the ocean below, a foreboding omen of the uncertainty that awaited them as they approached their once familiar home. The cliffhanger ending left their fate and that of Earth hanging in the balance. Chapter 19, Silence of the Void. The control room of Earth's defense forces was a hive of activity, operators moving with purpose, their eyes locked on the screens that displayed the incoming shuttle's trajectory. The tension in the room was palpable, the air charged with anticipation and dread. Commander, the shuttle from Elon Station X is approaching, but its flight pattern is irregular, reported Lieutenant Harris, his brow furrowed as he analyzed the data streaming in. Commander Vega stood behind the operators, her presence commanding despite the situation. Define irregular, Lieutenant. It's veering off course, ma'am, and there's no response to our hails, Harris replied, his fingers dancing across the console, seeking a connection with the silent vessel. Beside him, Specialist Ramirez leaned in closer to her screen, her voice tinged with concern. The shuttle's systems are all over the place. It's like someone's fighting for control. Vega stepped forward, her gaze locked on the shuttle's blip on the radar. Could it be a mechanical failure? Or something worse, Harris muttered, not wanting to voice the fear that gripped them all, that the infection had somehow made its way aboard. The room fell into a tense silence as the shuttle continued its erratic descent, the operators exchanging worried glances. Finally, Vega made the call. Prepare the interceptors. We can't risk an uncontrolled entry. Harris nodded, relaying the orders to the pilots on standby. The whine of engines filled the air as the interceptors launched, their sleek forms cutting through the atmosphere in pursuit of the shuttle. Ramirez's voice broke the silence, her words urgent. Commander, I'm picking up heat signatures on the shuttle. There are still people alive on there. Vega's eyes narrowed. Alive? Yes, but we need to know if they're infected. Keep trying to establish communication. The operators worked with renewed vigor, the possibility of survivors fueling their efforts. Harris's headset crackled to life and he signaled to Vega. I've got something. The room hushed as a voice, strained and filled with static, came through the speakers. This is Shuttle 718, requesting immediate medical assistance. Potential infection on board. Vega's heart sank. The message confirmed their worst fears. Quarantine protocol is in effect. No one leaves that shuttle until we've secured it. As the chapter drew to a close, the interceptors flanked the shuttle, guiding it toward a designated quarantine zone. The uncertainty of the situation settled over the control room like a dark cloud. The cliffhanger ending left Earth's defense forces and the shuttle's occupants in a precarious dance, with the silence of the void offering no answers, only the chilling possibility of the infection's reach. The shadows on the horizon hinted at a story far from over, a war with shadows that might just be beginning. Our shared story comes to a close. We thank you for experiencing war shadows alongside us. 
Let StoryWave AI continue to weave stories from your imagination by supporting us with a like, share, and subscription. Join us for more narrative voyages daily, March 2024, till we meet again. Thank you.